called the sun to rise. You lay it down to rest. You hold this heart of mine. You hold my every breath. Such an awesome
the name of God is mercy. Oh, the name of God is love. Oh, the name of God is kindness. And he's pouring out on us. Yes, he's pouring out on us, pouring out, pouring out on us. He's pouring out on us. He's pouring out on us. He's pouring out on us. Now he's pouring out of us. He's pouring out of us. Yes, he's pouring out of us. Oh, such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful. Such an awesome so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are, cause you're faithful to me. tried so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. But you chose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection can never earn it. We give what we don't deserve. to
Wow, that was a powerful worship from our Legacy Worship Band. So right now, for those of you watching and you want to be a part of this moment in our service, you can go to LegacyChurchAngel.com, click on the button Donate and follow the instructions, or you can text the give 84321. And as you prepare that offering this morning in God's tight, I just want to encourage you out of the book of Proverbs chapter 11, and I'm going to read from verse 24. The Bible says, There is the one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. And there's the one who withholds what is justly due, but it results only in want and poverty. The generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. This is the word of God. This is one of the attributes of our Heavenly Father. He is a generous God. When he gives, he doesn't just give some, he gives all. A perfect example is in John 3.16, where the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for our salvation, for our prosperity. And when he gives, he gives all. So this morning, I just want to encourage you. Verse 25, once again, says, the generous man is a source of blessing. So your act of generosity is a blessing, not just to yourself and your family, but to those around you. And it says, the Bible also went further to say, and, and shall be prosperous and enriched. He who waters will himself be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. Your giving, your act of generosity towards this church is not just to man, but unto God. And God will greatly reward you for it. Thank you to those, to those who have been given towards our building fund. As you can see, we're still under construction, but we're moving along. God will continue to bless you and expand your coast. And I pray that God will meet you at the very point of your need. Thank you all. And as you give this morning, God bless you. Again, to give, you can go to LegacyChurchNJ.com, click on the button Donate, or you can text to give 84321. We love you, and we'll see you again soon. Hello, welcome to Legacy Church. My name is Melissa Melendez, and I am one of the leaders here at Legacy. If you're watching, this message is not by chance or coincidence. It doesn't matter what your situation is right now. Just open up your hearts and receive what God has for you this morning. Good morning, good morning. What a beautiful day it is. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I just want to welcome you this morning uh, for joining us, tuning in to this Sunday service. And at the same time, I also want to thank you for allowing us into your homes um, this morning. Um, I have a word today, which I believe will be a blessing to you. And before we go right in, uh, why don't we just bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to have your way this morning. Let your word come forth in demonstration and the power of your Holy Spirit. Speak through me. Minister unto us this day. Father, we thank you. Our hearts are ready to receive from you this morning. Have your way. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm excited this morning. And that's because even though we're still under construction, we're closer than ever. We've made a lot of progress in this building, and we can't wait to have all of you worship together 
in this room very soon. So just stay informed through our social media platforms, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and YouTube. We will be announcing very soon when we will be opening. So stay tuned. Amen. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go right into the message. To this message, I have titled, Your Identity. This is a, a message that I believe is very important and vital um, in the days we're in right now. Um, so I'll just say, get your Bibles ready. I'm going to be giving out a lot of scriptures. Write them down. Get your pen and paper together and take some notes because I believe this will bless you. Even while I was studying to get this message ready, I was blessed by just reading it to myself. Amen? So my text is taken from Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. The Bible says, reading from the Amplified Bible, the Bible says, For you who are born again have been reborn from above spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and are all children of God, set apart for his purpose with full rights and privileges through faith in Christ Jesus. Through faith in Christ Jesus. So what am I talking about this morning? For those of you who watched last Sunday's broadcast, our pastor taught on staying connected, connection issues. So I would say this message is, can be tied to that message as well. And a few months ago, our pastor also preached a message he titled, Unmask, which means these two messages, when I put them together, speaks of one thing to me, identity. What is identity? I did a dictionary um, lookup of what that word means, and these are some of the definitions I was able to pull out. It says the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. Identity is the qualities, beliefs, personality, looks or expressions that make a person self-image. The state or fact of remaining the same one or ones as under varying aspects or conditions. This means right here that your identity does not change because you're going through stuff. It says here the state or fact of remaining the same one as under varying aspects or conditions. So identity doesn't change, irrespective of what the situation or the condition you find yourself in. The last definition I found was exact likeness in nature or qualities. I believe one of the biggest or a major problem that we face with today is what I have called identity crisis. Many don't know who they are. They are still grappling with the questions, who am I? What am I doing on, on the earth? What is my life about? This is one elementary subject that most Christians still don't fully understand. And it's a powerful key to spiritual breakthrough for countless believers in the globe today, around the globe today. Don't believe that you're just an old forgiven sinner just because someone tells you so. Look these things up for yourselves in the scripture. For Jesus said clearly, if we continue in his word, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. That is in John chapter 8 and verse 32. To fully understand our identity, our fact of being, our qualities or personalities, 
our self-image, we need to understand the one who created us in his image. To know him fully is not something the natural mind can or is able to comprehend, which is why we have the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, verse 27, that we are created in the image of God. My understanding of the image, of the word image, is that it is the reflection of an object, which tells me that we are a reflection of what God is. One dictionary translation defines the image as an optical counterpart or appearance of an object as is produced by reflection from a mirror. In Ephesians 5, we, we were instructed to be imitators of God as his beloved children. This is only possible because we have his life and nature in us. For us to be able to imitate God, we have his life and nature. Therefore, we can talk like him. We can love like him. We can walk in absolute mastery and dominion in the earth as Jesus did. For as he is, so are we in this world. You see, one thing that makes me understand that people don't fully understand where they are is when you say something that isn't true about them, they get upset. They get mad. Because somebody that knows where they are does not need to prove themselves to anybody. Because when you have a full understanding of who you are, it doesn't matter what I call you or what somebody else calls you, you would never get upset by it. It wouldn't upset you. Jesus, so many times, they called him that, you know, a blasphemy. That he was saying the wrong things, but he never got mad. Because he didn't have to prove himself to them. Because somebody called you something that you're not. It's only their opinion. So it shouldn't even bother you at all. You see, being born again, we are born after the second Adam which we know as Jesus Christ. You were created after him in righteousness and true holiness. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. This new creature is born anew after the image of God. You are a new person with the God nature in you. This is the reason we can imitate Christ. No matter how much you train a monkey or a chimpanzee to act like a human, it can never be human because it doesn't have the human nature. To be human, you have to be born that way. So you can't train an animal to act human. They can imitate it for a little bit, but never truly and truly act like humans because they don't have that nature. But we have the nature of God in us. That is why we have the ability and we're able to imitate. That's why the Bible instructed us to be imitators of God. How many of you remember in the books of Acts, chapter 19, verse 16, where the sons of Sceva attempted to act like Paul or try to cast out devils in the name that Paul uses? And the Bible says in verse 19, Acts 19, 16, the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. If you read the preceding verse, what they said was in the name of, in the name of, of Jesus whom Paul preaches. They didn't know what they were. So the devil was able to beat them up and strip them naked because they try to be somebody else. Only those who are born again have the nature of God in them. I'll repeat that again. 
Only those who are born again have the nature of God in them. They have the right and the authority to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Jesus cast out devils and he gave us the authority to do the same. He said in John 14 verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. You see, going back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. As profound as this truth is, there is more. Listen to this again. God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. Made after his likeness means we were made to function like him. Not only do we look like him, we can emulate him, we can function like him. The question then is, how does he function? I'm taking you guys back. I hope I haven't lost any one of you yet. Amen. Stay with me. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible gives us an idea of how God functions. In verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This signifies that God is a creator. Because the first thing we read about him in the book of Genesis was that he created. That indicates one of his functions. So like him, you are a creator. You can create by speaking his words. Secondly, notice that what he created, when he created the heavens and the earth. First is, notice what he created, the heavens and the earth. Heaven is an environment. So also is the earth. They are both environments that function in a certain way, based on design. This means that with faith-filled proclamations, you can create your own environment of victory, prosperity, and health. In Genesis 1 verse 2, we also found out that the earth was without form and in total chaos. With the creative word, he restored order, beauty, and form to the earth. Whatever he said came to be. Like him, you can author words, creative words of faith, and have what you say. Again, just like him, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter the circumstances or the conditions you find yourself in today. It doesn't matter how chaotic right now your environment is. You can recreate it with the words that you speak. You can recreate it. Amen? Amen? I believe, or I hope, that you keeping quiet right now means that this word is hidden home. Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, And God raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. We are seated together with Christ, a position of authority. To be seated refers to a place of authority. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And the verse we just read tells us that we are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our position, because of our position in Christ, we are seated in a place of authority over all sickness, diseases, and demons. Jesus said that this signs and wonders would follow them that believe including casting out demons, which requires authority. Which requires authority. Amen? That is why the sons of Skiver 
were not able to do what Paul did. So the sons of Sceva weren't able to cast the demons out because they didn't have the relationship that Paul had with God. Because they're not seated with Christ. This ties to the same message apostles, you know, taught or preached last Sunday. Connection issues. Connection issues. Not connected. Amen. Mark chapter 16. I'll read from verse 15 through 18. It says, And he said to, unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This brings me to a story that I read recently. What got my attention was a picture. It was a picture of a little boy in Sudan that looked frail and was at a point of dying. And next, what troubled me about the picture was the fact that there was a vulture just standing by as if waiting for this child to drop dead so that it can devour this child. But what I struggled with the most is the fact that somebody actually took the time to capture this moment. To capture this moment. And the worst part of it also is the fact that that picture that they have tied of the vulture and the little girl happens to also win an award because this photographer is actually a journalist that captured this moment. You have someone that needed help. And there was a vulture standing next by, just waiting for this child to die. And this journalist, the only thing he could do was to take a picture of this situation. I read in the story of that picture that this journalist couldn't help this child because they told them that these children have diseases they are infectious. So don't touch them even if they're dying. Don't try to help them even if there's a vulture standing next by just waiting for this child to die. What is the world telling us today? Don't touch. You can get infected. But Mark 16 tells us differently. It tells us differently. And I read that again. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. It didn't matter if the world says that disease is infectious. Because who you carry is much more greater than that sickness, that situation. Sometimes we tend to believe and listen to the created rather than the creator that is in us. What shall the signs follow? Them that believe. That includes all true followers of Christ that are alive on the earth right now. Take a look at this passage in Revelations. Revelations 5 verse 9 and 10 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. 
For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and the people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. The truth is we don't need to ask God to heal someone. We can speak with authority over that sickness and command it to flee in the name of Jesus. We can command those broken bones to grow. We can command because we have the authority. This is a standard practice in the early church when the followers of Christ were going out and healing the sick. The same is true when it comes to demons. They were able to cast out demons like it was nothing. We don't need, we have the authority. We have been given the power. You see, no matter the situation, you can tell the difference between somebody that fully understands who they are. I'll take you to the book of Acts. Paul, we have read the story of Paul when he was in prison they had a shipwreck they didn't die because Paul told them yes this is going to happen but nobody is going to die they got they got to an island and while they may put fire you know they made a fire and they were warming up themselves a poisonous snake bit Paul And Paul choked the snake into the fire. And nothing happened to Paul. That situation there speaks a lot to me. When Paul got beat by the snake, Paul then goes praying. Paul then goes saying, this venom that has just got into my body, I command you to die in the name of Jesus. Paul did not start a prayer, all night prayer, or send out prayer requests and said, pray for me, I've just been beaten by a poisonous snake. All Paul did was to shake the snake off, which tells me that Paul understood fully that even though the poison got into his body, but that poison was neutralized the minute it got on him. And he didn't have to start another prayer. He didn't have to start speaking in tongues right there and then. All he did was he just showed the snake into the fire. When you know who you are, when you fully understand what you carry, when you fully understand whose you are, it doesn't matter what comes on you. With that knowledge, that anything evil that comes in contact with you dies on contact, you will need to say a word. Amen. Amen. You will need to say a word. You will just keep on going. I put it this way. You can take a licking and keep on ticking. You hear bad news, you keep a good attitude because you know who you are. Can I get an amen this morning? Come on now, you guys are too quiet. Turn to the person sitting next to you say, I know who I am. Turn to the other person you ignored and say, I know who I am. Listen, if you say you know who you are, when was the last time you laid hands on a sick person? Are you one of those that will cover your face? Oh, stay away from me, you've got cold. Come on now. And now I'm hitting right now some soft nerves. You're one of those that wear gloves. Come on, let me pray for you, but I'm going to have to cover my hands because I don't want anything coming on me. Jesus. Jesus healed. The Bible says that there are not enough books to write all the miracles Jesus did. Not enough books. 
and we make these confessions as he is, so are we in this world. But yet, we hide because the society says to hide. There are people around us that are dying and because of Satan's infectious, we hold back. We stand and we capture it with our phones. We take pictures, we create monuments of what's going on rather than being the change. Don't get mad at me. I'm only preaching the word right now. Come on now. Come on now. Did you know that the only reference to prayer for healing in the New Testament is found in James 5.15? The rest of the New Testament tells us how Jesus, his disciples and the early church would exercise their faith when they went forth to heal the sick. They weren't asking the Father to heal the sick. They were saying things like be healed in the name of Jesus. The cripple at the gate beautiful. Silver and gold I have none, but such I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Peter's shadow falling on the sick, and as it walks past, they were getting healed. not them needing healing themselves. Will you know who you are? I am trying to get us to understand that we are the change the world is waiting for. We are the solution the world needs right now. So we need to rise up and take our rightful places, our rightful position, our place of authority, Jesus made it clear that we have authority here on earth which is naturally ours. Our position has been seated with Christ. You need to take the time every day to make yourself up. I'm not talking about the powder and the lipstick and, and, and the eyeshadows and, and the eye pencils. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about feeding yourself the word, staying connected like Jesus taught us, like our pastor Jesus taught us last Sunday. Staying connected, fixing any connection issues that you might have. It is the word of God that can do that. And when you have the word in you, form a prayer lifestyle. Take our time to go to God in prayer. When you go to God in prayer, it's not really asking for anything, but, you know, building yourself up. Building yourself up. You need to do that daily. In 1 John 4, verse 4, say, you, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Irrespective of anyone's perception of Christianity, we have the most dignified identity. Don't take it lightly. What could be more magnificent than being an associate of the God kind? Always be excited that you are a Christian. Always be excited. Be unapologetic in declaring your unwavering allegiance to Christ, his church, and all the believers. Nothing, I mean nothing, and no one should ever make you disassociate yourself from Christ or deny your oneness with him. Even the fiercest threats or persecution from the adversary shouldn't get you to cower. Come on now when we don't realize where we are in Christ, our faith will be crippled. If you don't feel worthy to exercise your authority in Christ, then you won't be doing it in a fullness of faith 
and with and will and will lack assurance. Satan works diligently to program people's minds to feel unworthy and unable to walk in the power of God here on earth. This is one of the most popular strongholds in existence today in the body of Christ. The truth is that we, if we say we are unworthy, when the blood says we are, then we are denying the work that Christ did for us on the cross. Refuse to be deceived by becoming a diligent student of the Word of God. Stay connected. Stay connected. You know one thing about that story of the vulture and the little girl? You can even Google it. You'll find it. The man, the journalist that won this award in 94, or four months later, he killed himself. And on his suicide note, he said this, I am haunted by the vivid memories of killings and cops and anger and pain. It is time for us to take God's word as the ultimate, the only true instruction and direction on how we can live our lives. You know, the other day after ministry, my wife who is in the medical field said, so then what am I why am I then going into the school to do all this schooling? And I will say this to you. For those of you in a medical field, what you have truly is not for the believers. Your education, your, your medical experiences because a true Christian does not need healing. A true Christian works in divine health. A true believer has the life of God in them which cannot be tainted, which cannot be corrupted, which can never be infected. So if you find yourself with something going on that you need to go back to the Word. You need to go back to the Word. Amen. I close with this testimony, which I've said a couple of times. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with a heart condition. And I found myself, I felt like life was leaving me. A month went by, I lost over 50 pounds. You can imagine me losing 50 pounds. All that was left was just my head. At that point, I look at it as my neck wasn't strong enough because my body was no longer proportional to the size of my head. As funny as that sounded, I didn't have, I had different specialties of doctors that I went to visit and they tried everything they put me on different medications and I had a ton of medications I had to take daily weekly but it wasn't helping then one day I remembered when I was able to lay hands on people and they were recovered and I remembered how I laid hands on a child that had hernia and the next day it dried up and went away. And I remember the word that talks about that we have the life of God in us. I took and packed up all that medication because I didn't want a plan B. Pack them all up, put them in a plastic bag and throw them out. My wife was telling me, why don't you just keep them even as you make that confession? I said, no, because I don't want a plan B. If the word can heal me, then nothing else can. 
And every day I would declare the word over myself. Day went by, turned to two days and three days, but nothing was changing in the natural, but I did not give up. I kept on declaring the words over me, saying, I am the healed of the Lord. I am the healed that the devil is trying to make sick. The life of God is in me. Every organ in me are functioning to the tent which they were created. I was making those confessions every day. And every moment under my breath out loud, I would continue to speak that word to myself. And before I knew it, I felt strength being restored. Life coming right back in. A month went by. I started gaining my weight back. Without a medication, without a heart surgery, which the doctors were telling me that's the only solution that was left to have an open heart surgery. But I refused to be cut open because we have something that we have neglected for way too long. And that is the word of God. I held on to that word. They said I would never be able to run. I would never be able to play because I was actively, I was active with soccer. I would never be able to do that again because even after the surgery it was a 50-50 chance. I don't want to put anything on my trust in something that says 50-50. The word of God is 100% guaranteed. And I stood on that. And my health was restored. And I was made whole. And ever since, I've never been sick again. Because now I come to understand that if the word can keep me, then there's nothing else that can keep me. Understand who you are today. This is what the world needs to see in us our unapologetic confession of our faith. Or an unapologetic confession of who we are. It might sound like you're bragging, but yes, it is okay because you are bragging in a name that is above every other name, which is the name of Jesus. After all, David did it. When he faced Goliath, he said, I come against you in the name of God. Come on now. And he took Goliath down. I don't know which Goliath you're facing today. Take that word before it and watch it crumble. Take this word. Stay connected. Let the world see us. Remove the mask. Remove the mask and stop hiding your identity. Because that's what the world needs to see today. Amen. We never want to end a service without giving someone the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior. You see, in Christ, we have everything that we need. That is why the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, you know, 2 Peter 1, that he has given us all things that pertain to life, which is in the natural, and godliness, which is spiritual. All things, not some things, but in Christ. Everything that you need to be everything that God has called you to be is in Christ. So today, if you've never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, let me help you and in come into the family. Just repeat after me. Say, thank you, Father, for your son who died in my place. I believe he is your son. And I believe that he was raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I accept him Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Never to go back. I declare my salvation. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, 
please D DM us. We would like to send you a free gift, a book, and a Bible. And we would like to also give you more information about this new life. And let me be the first to say welcome home. Before we leave, I want us to make this declaration together. If you're sitting with not someone, just turn to the person you're sitting next to and make this bold declaration. Say, I know who I am and what belongs to me. I am Abraham's seed and heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Christ is in me. In him I live and move and have my being. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Satan and the world are under my feet. I live in victory, in divine health and prosperity. And my life gravitates upwards and forward only. From glory to glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that declaration, let me hear a resounding amen. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us into your homes this morning. I hope and I pray that this word gravitates, this word grows in you, this word moves you and spores you into unmasking yourself and allowing the Christ in you to be revealed and seen by the people around you. We love you. Remain blessed. We'll see you again, same time, same station, next week. Remain blessed. Wow, what a powerful message that was. I hope that you have been blessed by this word. Please stay connected with us through our social media platform like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We look forward to seeing you here next week at the same time at Legacy Church.